It's Friday the 26th of June and you're welcome to join me here at the foot of the cross on this Friday. The reader in this short office is Virginia Craven. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We say together, Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save us and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. The appointed psalm is Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you hasten to rise up early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil. For he gives his beloved sleep Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his gift, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute with their enemies in the gate. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised, then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? This is the word of the Lord. Recently I ran an event for a group of senior leaders in an organisation. The workshop was on the theme of being undefended, which is to say that one of the real challenges in getting teams to work well together is that people erect all sorts of invisible barriers, consciously and unconsciously, which end up getting in the way of the team's commitment to the primary task. I noticed that one theme which quickly emerged was that rather than speaking about being undefended, people slipped into talking about being vulnerable. And it was clear that they were used to this sort of talk and didn't much like it. I asked them what they thought the difference was. After all, making yourself vulnerable and being undefended seemed pretty synonymous. But what emerged in the conversation was that while being an undefended leader sounded very positive, something to which you could aspire, Making yourself vulnerable was something that rankled, it reeked of weakness and self-indulgence. I suspect we need to be very careful what language we use in the realms not only of organisational behaviour but of Christian spirituality. Too often in the church what people think we're called to is a sort of reckless risk-seeking an indulgent vulnerability as if the more we suffer, the better we are. People in Christian spirituality journals often write about not having enough struggle and suffering in their lives. It's true that whole swathes of Christians down the centuries have donned hair shirts and entered into privation, 
as if it's true that it's only when we suffer and make ourselves suffer that we are being truly Christian. But what if there isn't particularly a cross to be taken up, at least not an obvious one? I suspect that the language that's more helpful to us in our age is not that of willfully entering into vulnerability, but of being open and undefended, ready to walk with Christ in whatever way God offers. This requires us to travel light, not to be stuck, not to descend into materialism. It also requires openness of heart and mind, curiosity and empathy. After all, the cross we are invited to take up may look surprising. It may not look like a cross to others, but our calling is to be ready to enter into whatever God presents us with in an undefended way. And we need to work at that undefendedness wherever we sense that we may be shut down, hardened in the face of divine grace, we need to work at healthy change. Christina Rossetti wrote a wonderful poem uh, in 1862 about her rock-like nature. She said this, Am I a stone and not a sheep, that I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross, to number drop by drop thy blood slow loss and yet not weep? Not so those women loved, who with exceeding grief lamented thee. Not so fallen Peter, weeping bitterly. Not so the thief was moved. Not so the sun and moon, which hid their faces in a starless sky, a horror of great darkness at broad noon. I only I, yet give not o'er, but seek thy sheep, true shepherd of the flock. Greater than Moses, turn and look once more, and smite this rock. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was in the fullness of his power most gentle and in his greatness most humble, bestow his mind and spirit upon us who have no cause for pride, that clothed in true humility we may discern the way of true greatness. Hear our prayer through the same Jesus who is now Lord and Christ. Amen. On this Friday we pray for the life of our nation, for our Queen, for her government, for all in public life and all in leadership around the world. We pray that they may know divine wisdom and be prompted and guided by God's Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Friday, we pray for the church and for our renewal, for our return to our first love in Jesus Christ, for Sarah, Bishop of London, for Father Luigi as he joins us in ministry here, for a blessing upon our congregation, scattered as it is in these days, for our sister and partner parishes in Washington, D.C. and in Nama Villa in Mozambique. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities and our neighbours. We pray for members of our families, those from whom we may necessarily be distanced at this time. We pray for grace to love one another faithfully as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick in body, mind and spirit, for all those who cry out to God this night, that they may know his healing and his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we commend to you, Father, all our beloved dead. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them, May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the silence of this holy place and in our own homes, we pause and offer our own prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer of St. Richard of Chichester. 
Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all the benefits that you have won for us, for all the pains and insults that you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ our Saviour give us peace. Amen.